Hello people and welcome back to interview with Abhimanyu. I've got an exciting update. On this channel, we have created a playlist called AWA Shorts. In this playlist, you will find two to four minutes short videos, highlights of every conversation that we have, the juiciest part of the conversations. So please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon because we upload these shorts almost every other day. As a wise man once said, always start with the shorts. My guest today is one of my favorite people to talk to. She's a nutritionist, but everyone knows her as the inch loss expert. She's a gem of a person, very sweet to talk to, but when it comes to work, she is a hardcore professional and her only goal is to melt that fat away from your body in the healthiest way possible. She has a clients in Pune, Mumbai, Dubai, London, God knows where else. She has clients everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the gorgeous, the smart Maitri Ramaya. Why do you make me do this every single time? Welcome. Thank you so much. Everyone. So, if Deepika hadn't introduced us right that day, I would have taken ages to approach. I'm not lying. I'm not lying because I'll tell you why. Because I thought, I thought that you had, you have this vibe. Uh, you know, in caps lock, D and D, do not disturb. You have that mm, thing. So, and not in a rude or condescending way, but in a professional way that I'm busy, don't disturb. But I, now that I know you, right, so I, I, I will agree on camera, on record that I was wrong. I think you are awesome. And yeah, it's been like, what, 15, 20 minutes and I already realized that I was wrong. And there's this warmth about you that I didn't notice was there. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this right now. So I get this all the way. Yeah, you do? You do? So I'm not wrong. In a way. <laughs> and it's very deliberate. Yeah. Oh. Because I really, I don't like to speak to... People who have so have you been pestered a lot by people? That's why this yes. defense mechanism or why? It's uh, so when I'm usually working when you meet me yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, at the location and uh, that time it requires a lot of focus mm -hmm. and uh, I love good contributions. It could be humor, it could be uh, informative but I don't like uh, shallow and low quality disturbances right. which have also happened a lot so yeah. so I put up a, I put up a, a barrier okay and I feel if you are quality enough you will bother to break the barrier right so that's how it goes so it's like the onus lies on the person's shoulder yes. who's approaching that okay yes. what yes. content is he going to provide yes. yeah you, you have to you level up to be contributing that, that makes sense that makes sense and I'm really excited because we are going to discuss my favorite topic. She knows food and nutrition. One of my favorite topics. Seriously? Yeah. You're into nutrition? Like not nutrition, nutrition per se, but I want to know. I want to learn a lot because I'm really curious to know how my body reacts and works with food. So that, yeah. I you have a fabulous physique if I can comment. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you work out regularly? Uh, I am not that big on lifting weights. Like, I do lift weights, but I like to be active. Your body speaks of CrossFit and so does your energy. Oh, that's agility and thrift-based. So, uh, CrossFit workouts. is relatively, it's a very new concept. When I was young, like when I was a kid, right? So, parents had gymnastics in gymnastics. So, usse wo ek ka background or wo ek banta na, ek foundation. Ban gaya tha. So, yeah, so I like to remain active because I've seen it in my family. People who are old... I see them, so I learn from them that, okay, if you remain active, not necessary that you have to push and pump iron like heavy stuff, you remain active, you know, challenge yourself, eat right, so yeah, you, you, you know, longevity. You know? Your energy speaks of that, huh? that, you know, you are very, your energy and your body language speaks of, you know, you're very, you're in uh, uh, exercises that are very energetic, very quick moving. Uh, uh, agility based. Yeah, I do like yeah. doing a bit of snatch. Uh, you can all. make out from the person's body. Right. Uh, whether that person's working out at all. So you will see a lot of men especially with lean arms, lean legs and a pot belly. Right. That's a very clear indication of no workout and absolutely terrible uh, nutrition. Right. Then you see uh, bulky bodies which you realize uh, are difficult, they, they are difficult to move. Uh -huh. uh, they are also a little laid back in the manner in which they converse. They're little you you sense an element of lethargy. Hmm. That speaks of heavy weightlifting. Yeah. And then there are these very thrifty, very quick moving. Their energy, their whole uh, their whole behavior, their whole uh, uh, yeah, their whole energy speaks of. So that zone, yeah, I like to stay in that yeah. zone. I like to. So I there are, yeah. I think that's 
that, that's right. Really right. I mean, it's subjective at the end of the day. I mean, you never know, right? People, everybody, they wish. Yeah, everybody has their they own wish. Uh, yeah. desires and look out. But personally, to become bigger, unless I'm not competing in a competition, if I have to, I think it also carries a lot of prejudice that, okay, you know, yeah, I have to lift a lot yes, of, yeah, yes, it does, right? It does, it <laughs> that does. ego thing. Yes. For me, I, I mean, people can say, no, I just like being big or whatever. For me, yeah, so this zone is nice. It's fashionable, by the way, lately, a uh, lean physique like yours mm. is very in now. There was a time when uh, people were following Salman Khan, the very big, yeah, 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 huge know, muscles, I, yes. grow, 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 grow. But I think that is kind of getting done with, except uh-huh. for the bodybuilders and people who are into competing. People are moving more into lean body uh, looks. People are falling in love. They are falling more in love with lean body looks. Functional oh, athletic, training is on yeah, the rise. Athletic, yes. Crossfit is on the rise. So. Yeah. So, I have got a lot of questions. A few concerns as well that yes. I really want to discuss. But let's just start with, you know, your expertise. Psychology of weight management. So, I, I mean, I want you to take it away, just start, so that, how did you feel the need, you know, to get into this? There must have been some, you know, some stimulation, some, something must have happened that you realize that, okay, this needs to be done, you know, it, because as long as we're talking psychology, it's not just the food, as you said, what we eat, it's the approach, right, how we take the, our lifestyles towards. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's just hear about it. So, uh, I come from a very orthodox, conservative Gujarati family. Mm. And as you know, Gujaratis have minimum of five sweets on their dining table on yes. any lunch day. Yep. And uh, there is no restriction. In fact, uh, the way our families move are uh, the healthier, healthier in their cases, the, the fatter, the, bigger, yeah, the, the bigger. better. And uh, I enjoyed sweets a lot. To an extent that I had become 150 kilos, I couldn't move. My thighs would rub against each other when I moved. Uh-huh. And... Uh, to top it all, I was madly in love with clothes and fashion. <laughs> and there is absolutely no way that you can wear the clothes you desire. With 100 and you... what? I was 150. 100? Massive. Yeah, I was mass. I was huge. I was so huge. I refused to get any photographs. And then I was very young. So at, I was at an age when uh, girls and boys would date. No boy would look at me. It was very now. Now, was uh, one question. Yeah. When you were 150 yeah. kilos... How did you feel at that time? So, I mean, if you felt wrong, did you start doing something about it? Were you feeling shitty inside? That's what I really want to know. Or were you like, okay, it's okay, I'm cool, I'm happy? I felt, I was, I had, and the the best, I felt terrible. Right. And uh, to top it all, none of my family members felt that there was anything wrong. They just thought I was so cute. (laughs) So, you see, there is no motivation or encouragement Hmm. because it's, not only is it look-wise, for me, it was the way I looked was terrible, but it's also health-wise terrible because your cholesterol levels are so high, you are uh, it'll, you'll find it more difficult to get back into shape. But fortunately, I was very, very young. I was about 14, 15. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of worked in my favor because my BMR was high. Right. Obviously, because nobody around me was encouraging me to lose weight, mm-hmm. um, I had to do whatever I had in hand. So every evening I would shut my living room and uh, put on music that I liked and I would dance. I love dancing. Okay. I would dance. With an intention to burn calories. With an intention okay. to burn calories and to lose my weight. Uh-huh. I had fallen in love with a guy and okay. I wanted him to take interest right. in me. Sweet. And the way I looked, uh, there was no way that mm. uh, he would look at me. Yeah. So that was my motivation back then. And I of course started watching my calories because everyone said, Meetha kam karo, meetha kam karo. So I halted my sweets. I would just take, I'm very fond of sweets. I would just take one sweet in a day. That moment, it worked very well, whatever little I did. And I lost a lot of weight. Not completely, but I lost a decent quantity. Then I felt it was now time to join someone professional, a professional nutritionist or a professional trainer. Believe me, Abhimanyu, I have trained with some of the best trainers in India. I have taken some of the best nutritionists in India. And none of them could land up making a dent in my weight. Uh, which is when I realized that... Uh, you have to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, the only person... Everybody keeps saying that, you know, your success is in your hand. And, you know, all those jazzy quotes. So, were you lacking motivation? Because it's I, I think it's also very... It's not right to blame the nutritionists as well, who were, as you said, I would good. blame them because uh, the what I realized is nutritionists would land up giving, okay, 
this is what you eat, this, 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 this. Uh-huh. Listen, I feel hungry at two. I get sweet craving. This, what food you're giving is not enough for me. Right. Mm-hmm. Your body you is telling you that, okay. yeah. Exactly. You have to eat so much only. It doesn't work that way. You have to give a nutrition plan to somebody the way that person's mm-hmm. body works. Has to be bespoke. Yeah. Force doesn't yes. work. Yeah. You can't force somebody. At the most, so when I say psychology of weight management, I understand maybe what she could have done at that point of time was, okay, if you're hungry, you have a bowl full of, full of uh, boiled vegetables. Right. That will fill you up. Right. But that that suggestion was not there. It was like, just you eat what I have told you. Huh. And that's about it. But I get sweet cream. No, you're not supposed to get sweet cream. That's not a response. Lack of that's, knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Yeah. You, that's not the direction you take. You yeah. have to train your head. Okay, if you're hungrier, you have one more bowl of veggies. Right. If you're hungrier, you have some soup. If you're hungrier, so that's how you go in your, hmm. that's how you go about giving an advice. You don't just dole out advice and expect somebody right. to follow it. Uh, even training wise, I, I have an anterior pelvic tilt. Okay. And uh, what I discovered with my trainers was, um, I don't know whether it was lack of qualification or their desire to follow a certain path which mm-hmm. they have seen performance in. So I'll give you a small example. When you do squats, you're supposed to jut your hips out. Right. Only a person who has anterior pelvic tilt is not supposed to do that. Okay. Okay. But every time I did squats, the advice was jut your hips out, jut your hips out, and that when you have anterior pelvic hip, uh, when you have anterior pelvic tilt and you jut your hips out, it only exaggerates the problem. Right. And gives you a belly. So is there a fix for that? I've fixed it. Now. Okay. No. There so is, yes, there okay. is a fix okay. for that. Okay. I would like to know that as well. Like how yes, do you? There are stretches for this. Okay. Wherein uh, you have a muscle called iliopsoas in. Uh, okay. In your, yeah. Uh, under your belly. Right. And uh, anterior pelvic tilt is nothing but the uh, tightening of the hamstrings. Uh-huh. And uh, the your iliopsoas is not worked. Okay. When you start working your iliopsoas, there are stretches and workouts. Right. When you start, your uh, belly starts tightening, your right. hamstring starts getting looser. You also need to do hamstring stretches right. to get that looser. And that resurrects your anterior pelvic okay. tilt. But you need that kind of information to be able exactly. to... Exactly. You need to train your... those specific muscles. Yes, right? So are, are we talking about stabilizers? Are those somehow stabilizers? Yes. In, in a way. In a way. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Right. Yes. Cool. So this, these are a couple of examples that I hmm. had to... I faced. And which is where I realized that let me just study it on my own and understand what works for me. Which is when I realized that different things work for different bodies. Hmm. And till date, I keep observing people who are uh, who say, "Oh, you know, uh, I want to lose fat. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a lot of cardio. Listen, I want to gain some muscle. Should I pump heavy weights?" So people are going by blanket rules, not understanding that everybody responds in a different manner. Hmm. And uh, because today I have so many clients, I deal with them. It's strange how everybody's, I have a lot of couples as well, so everybody's body behaves differently. A brother and sister, their body behaves differently, uh, even though they come from the same genetics, same parents, same everything. A husband and wife, their bodies behave differently, so I just recently had a couple. The husband says, I cannot, I need a glass of milk in the morning and a glass of milk at night. Okay. And uh, if I don't have that, I get, and I have issues, I'm just not able to function hmm. really. And the wife says, if I take a glass of milk at night, I just can't sleep. I get indigestion. Um, I'm uncomfortable. Hmm. Basically, she has lactose intolerance. Good, yeah. So everybody's body behaves differently. And as a nutritionist, you're supposed to... It takes a little time to figure out what's working, what's not working, which is why I have a questionnaire that hmm. my clients need to fill before we start the nutrition okay. plan. What works? What are their favorite foods? What, what they like, what they don't like? Because... Psychologically, it's essential that the nutrition plan that you have, while Karela may be very good, uh, Gourd may be very good, but if you don't like it, it's not, you're not going to sustain. Yeah, it'll be hard to stick to it, right? Sustenance is Mm. very essential on nutrition and uh, workout plans. And remember, this is not three months or six months. It's a lifestyle. So, two things. A, you start with things that you like. Mm. You mold them better. So if you do like, if you don't like rice and you like chapati with your with your meals, there is a better way to have chapati instead of wheat chapati, which usually causes uh, gluten issues for people who have celiac yeah. disease. Uh, start making multigrain rotis. 
which tastes somewhat similar and you get the amino acids and proteins from various flours. Yeah, sorghum flour or... Yes, like, yeah. soy, bajra, jowl, right. jowar, everything, everything that you can think of except for wheat. Yeah. So these are small minute tweaks. Eventually you reach a situation where you probably try to do away with any kind of mm. carbs from the uh, from the chapati itself. Right. But that's a transition that takes yeah. time. So you give yourself so you start with foods that you like, start tweaking them in a small way. Second point is um, I forgot what the second point is, but that's all right. That's since you're talking about approach, right? So yeah. yeah, so it was uh, even I forgot. I was like so much into it. So I was like, so so first approach is that you eat whatever you like, and then you tweak stuff out of it. So my question is that do you go into the history of your clients, like what they've been eating since ten, twenty years? Because I that I think that is really important. I totally do. And uh, some of the common discoveries. So they have a question which says, please describe your uh, day's diet. What uh-huh. time you do what? Right. And what I observed is, A, most of them are having a lot of carbs Mm. in the day. So they would have, in the morning, they'll have two biscuits with tea. Now, once upon a time, I was this way. I would not think of having a Mari biscuit or a gold uh, or a, uh, let's say a Mari biscuit. biscuit, I would uh, think that, oh, wow, I avoided a cream biscuit. I have done a marvelous (laughs) job. So, uh, have the two biscuits. But today I realize how, how much harm even a, one biscuit can do. Right. And then they have khakra in the evening. Yeah. So, they are, la- they are loading themselves with so many carbs hmm. that it's absolutely impossible for the insulin to halt functioning and have their fat burn. I have, a, see, I mentioned concern, right? My main concern today is insulin. I want to talk about insulin. But yeah, I'll let you think. We'll, we'll come to that. We'll come yeah. to that. No, I'm, uh, so... A, they would have a lot of carbs in mm. the day. B, they would leave themselves extremely hungry. Right. So, when you are... Now, this is very interesting. So, if you gap out your meals for more than four hours or more than two hours, uh, you are bound to get carb craving only. So, when I make my nutrition plans, mm. I give them small quantities of protein every two hours mm. and small quantities of vegetables every two hours. Okay. Whenever you, the, so protein has a lot of advantages besides contributing to your muscle. Fills now, you up? Fills you up and yeah. makes you thirsty. Okay. So our, so that you don't need to force water down your throat, you will naturally feel thirsty. Right. So you will right. end up reaching your target of water intake. Yeah, a gallon and, a day, whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. And what happens is if you don't eat protein every two hours, the third hour you will crave carbs only. No quantity of protein is going to fill you. Hmm. Which is why it's essential you have protein. Now, when I say protein, people... Now, when I say I eat protein every two hours, people get paranoid. They are like, oh my God, I have to work. You think I have time to just sit and have protein meals and veggie meals mm-hmm. all the while. But what they don't understand is that if you do start, if you have uh, an agenda in mind to lose weight or to... You have to, to yeah. No, there are easier ways. You yeah. look for them. So, you can have chana chur, you can have uh, those... Uh, Roasted chanas, you can carry whey protein in a tin with you to your office. Just keep mixing and having that. All those things are possible if you have, if your agenda is to give a solution and to resurrect mm. your health. So yeah, that is how you go about with protein. Yeah, I'll just dive into the concern part. That was Insulin. Talking. Yes. So it's going to be a you know, long monologue. So yeah, bear with me. So that's how I, so I just, I'm not an expert, but in my experience whatever I've eaten right so I just like a sadhu sage I sit on it and I think about it like what have I done wrong you know Ab tak, kya gand khaya aur kya asar hua? so let's talk India let's not go outside so if you go anywhere as you said Gujarat people are heavier right Punjab you'll see the same you come to Jammu you'll see I mean people all those who are morbidly obese yeah fine but even normal people working people who go to the office they have a paunch right and yeah skinny arms they don't work out fine okay if they are doing yoga and all whatever keeps them healthy but they have big bellies sign of an unhealthy lifestyle right so dheere dheere we started eating healthy but all those who are eating healthy abhi lagta instagram dekhi ki bahut zyada kar rahe hain but just compared to the population of india we are a minority all those who are eating healthy right we are a minority Al- अपना हिंदुस्तान जितना बड़ा है उस हिसाब से बहुत से लोग अभी भी वही सब खाना खा रहे हैं वैसे ही खा रहे हैं वैसे ही मोटे-मोटे हैं एंड देन दे हैव डिजीजेस एज़ वेल राइट सो 
we narrowed it down we went to macronutrients so we divided carbs proteins and fat right so now we are eating according to that including micro as well minerals vitamins whatever i have this feeling it's it's a very you know it can be wrong it can be wrong but i since i have a smart brain in front of me i would like to discuss you know just brainstorm over it maybe we can you know create a moment right now so i think people really at an early age really really need to study insulin and its effects on body because what if what if that is the main reason what because i think even athletes who are performing even people who are living sedentary lifestyle or active people we all without knowing are messing with our insulin levels and we don't know yeah so what i really want to say is we are messing with our insulin levels without knowing that we are messing with our insulin levels so you know now people are coming out with high glycemic low glycemic yeah it's not just sugar refined sugar we are eating like that so agar hum maida vada bhi kha rahe hain ab people are getting aware so how about we find a balance i am not talking about getting you know aesthetically sound bulkier i'm just talking about longevity right now so if you want to have a long health because people are dying due to you know people are dying because of diabetes type 1 type 2 uh, girls face uh, what is that uh, I've, pcod pcod yes pcod so all of these diseases i think can be because most of them are caused by insulin resistance right yes. so what do you think like do, do you think people at an early age should target insulin specifically because it people are talking about carbs protein itna protein khana itna grams per weight yeah yeah theek hai i really if i have kids i want to educate them about insulin at an early age so i want to know your take on this so uh, insulin is one part of it what leads to most of the diseases like pcod or thyroid or diabetes is increase in fat levels mostly okay something we need to understand about nutrition health bodies is there are no ground rules different things work for different people mm. there are just some basic rules again which are not which are not fixed because they could be exception there could be exceptions for everything right uh let me just tell you about how insulin functions and why is what is the problem with it currently for a majority of the right. people uh whenever you consume carbs and only when you consume carbs your insulin activates hmm. and uh, whenever insulin is active fat burning stops right so i mentioned that majority of us are obese and uh, or rather have higher fat hmm. levels and require to reduce that but if you are constantly going to keep eating carbs you are going to constantly keep your insulin high yeah. which is going to reduce the amount of time that the body gets to burn fat hmm. uh, even if people are educated in insulin so you someone may be very lean like you are and uh, yet be unhealthy hmm. so there are no there are no ground rules to this but yes de- definitely educating people on how insulin works when it is lower Uh, because carbs are the only contributors to the spike of insulin if you have protein or fat which is what happens in keto right. what keto does is it completely uh, halts the requirement of insulin activation by coming down to 20 g carbs which are only from your green leafy vegetables right. so the insulin just does not activate leaving you a whole lot of time for the fat to burn so yeah are, i am in agreement with you are, are you a keto promoter like should people get into this uh if you are 20 25 kilos above your regular weight right, yes right. and then there are a lot of athletes who are into it to feel fresher hmm. so uh i am dealing with the indian cricket sorry with the cricket team in muscat okay and a lot of them are on keto the athletes hmm. only to get they are there's another thing that happens with redu- reduction of uh fat and the, the other thing that happens with the reduction of fat is your strength and your stamina goes up okay your energy levels for performance go up so uh i have experienced this with a lot of clients that when their fat levels start dropping 3 kilos 4 mm-hmm. kilos 5 kilos 10 their ability to push more weights their ability to perform their stamina levels are all higher at the gym or yeah. whenever they are wherever they are working out as against when they had higher fat levels so yes and at And if you ask me am i a promoter of keto for these two areas i am uh, there was one of my clients who was on a weight loss keto mm-hmm. uh she did land up losing a lot of weight right but what she was happier about was that she she had pcod and uh-huh. fatty liver okay. and the tests that she got done right both gone oh nice and that was because of keto 
Okay. No, no, because of the diet, yeah. Because, because of, of the keto and because of the vitamins right. and minerals and everything that I kept in my system right, constantly. Right. So much so that she's renewing. Okay. She's been with me for two years now uh-huh. and she's renewing again. Okay. Yeah, but uh, because, you know, fad, people just run after things, right? So everyone wants to lose weight. A healthy person, I mean, you don't have any disease, you just have some extra fat. Would you advise? Yeah, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so, so someone like Karen who wants to lose, I don't know, I'm not calling you fat, okay? So, <laughs> so someone like Karen who needs to lose, let's say, one or two kilo, wants to fit into her dress or whatever, just like people usually... You do not advise. No, not right. No, no. And because I, I, I really experiment with myself a lot. So I did once. I was like, yeah, why not? Let's just give it a shot. So at that time, I just got a glimpse of what, uh, you know, uh, hypoglycemia can feel like. Yes. It's terrible. It is very bad. I know they call it keto flu or whatever, but maybe I wasn't meant to do that. Maybe my body wasn't, or maybe I didn't follow the right procedure. But whatever I did, I had severe headaches for days. For days. Days would be 20, 25? Uh, what? How many days? Yeah. No, I couldn't bear the headache for five or six. So it was unbearable. It was yeah, unbearable. So that is adaptation phase for keto. I'll just give you a brief idea about how keto functions. So body has two sources of energy. You know, when you move your hand up and down, you walk, you talk. Fat and carbs, right? Yes, fat yeah. and carbs. There's uh, energy is being used. Hmm. You don't have batteries inside you. You're not plugged to a charge. Yep. Where is your energy coming from? So it's either carbs or fat. Hmm. Excuse me. Body finds it easier to break down carbs as against fat. Yep. But the moment you don't have carbs, which is the situation with keto, it has no option but turn to the fat for its uh, energy. Hmm. Now, because it's so accustomed to carbs for all these years and it's easier, right. in the beginning it will battle you. It will give you headaches, probably nausea, diarrhea, various problems, right. uh, push you up when you have carbs. Yeah, carbs, yeah. Have carbs. And if you give in, then obviously it moves on to carbs for its source of energy. Yeah. But when you don't give in, it will have no option but turn to the existing stored fat for right. energy. And you will be surprised after 7 to 10 days how fresh you feel because your insulin is not being touched anymore. Hmm. So you have to give yourself that it is a bad phase, I agree. So since you said that there are two sources of fuel, right? And people always say, uh, uh, you know, uh, people always... Uh, you know, they talk about men when we weren't eating all these processed food and all, you know, earlier when we were hunters, hunters and gatherers. So at that time, they weren't having grains or refined carbs. I agree, they were hunting, they were having flesh, but they were having fruits and stuff. So there was a lot of carb intake as well. Maybe they were having beans, you know, or whatever. Uh, because fire was there. They were boiling stuff, right? They were cooking. So they were having beans. Or, so they were having carbs and all. So isn't keto... You know, being in a state of ketosis, more of a survival mode. So why to keep... Uh, I agree that when people need to lose, so for example, someone needs to lose 20, 30, 40 kilos. Yes, for him or her, it is survival. She, because she's like, you know, she's going to die or he's going to die. But someone, people like us. So being in a state... It's just a doubt because I don't know. Being in a state of ketosis uh, as a regular human being... Isn't that because our body starts uh, taking fuel, uh, fat as fuel when it is in a survival mode, right? Hunting, you don't have food, you are hungry, starving, so your fat starts burning. Obviously, you're not getting. Now, deliberately putting yourself into that, how harmful can it be? Like, can it be, like, you know, are there any uh, records where you have seen people who have been on keto since ages or a generation, like two generations, they don't eat carbs? Do we have such record or? Interestingly, people are not to keto for a lifetime. They are. They actually take up keto as a lifetime diet. Uh, because like I said, there are two sources of fuel for the body energy. Uh, one is uh, carbs and the other one is fat. But uh, definitely the people who are on keto for a lifetime have mm. refueling days uh, wherein they, they fill their system with carbs because carbs are the only thing that activates the growth hormone. Right. What happens is elongated periods of being on keto halts mm. the body from functioning. You will neither lose weight, you will not gain muscle, nothing is going to happen. Your bodily systems will stop functioning because your growth hormone is not getting food. Hmm. And uh, carbs are the only thing that the growth hormone feeds on. Okay. So every month or every 21 days, a person who's on a lifetime keto has to do carb refueling or refueling. Okay, medicine. okay. I didn't know that. I thought it's like a permanent fix that no, no. carbs henceforth. No. No. Nothing of that sort. And uh, one of the issues with keto uh, in terms of people who want to lose 20, 25 kilos and they 
a lot of people say we went on to keto and we landed up gaining back all the way to there. Mm. So the correct way to go about keto is after you finish whatever, three months, six months, one year of keto, two years of keto, to move on to a low calorie diet, uh, still stay focused. Usually once people are done with keto, they are so happy to be able to have carbs that they they just start binge eating and then all right. the weight that they right. have lost comes mm-hmm. back again. So it's very essential that you still monitor, still stay strict. You may be on a low carb diet, eat carbs, no problem, but ensure that you are counting them. Counting macros is huge. Right. Uh, in fact, I started seeing a huge difference in my body only when I started counting my macros. Mm-hmm. Till then, I just randomly thought, okay, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Yeah. A lot of my clients still do that. Even though I give them grams, 20 gram of rice and 50 gram of lentils, they would just randomly take it and then they say, you know, we are not having any difference in our body mm. mass. Are you measuring your uh, the food the way I have told you? Um, no, we are not. We just randomly. So essential to measure it. What's really funny and I find it really weird is that, you know, people even after going through two years of any diet, any diet, let's say a lifestyle change and they achieve their goal or they are almost there, they start, you know, misbehaving with their lifestyle because they had achieved something and then they go back to that shitty zone, right? So, it's funny because they don't learn. They don't learn that, okay, it is a lifestyle. Have you ever heard Milka Singh? Because I think he's, what, 90, I guess, now. He's 89, 90 right now. Milka Singh, when he says, he always says one thing, always, always, always. People ask him because you're 90 and you're so fit, you're still running, you're just so lean. He says, he likes to talk to him a lot. वो सर बोलते हैं कि अपनी देसी बंदा ऐसी बात करता है ना वो कहता है अपनी जीप पे कंट्रोल रखो दैट्स हिज थिंग एंड दैट स्पीक्स वॉल्यूम्स दैट यू कांट ओवर ईट यू कांट यू शुडंट हां कर लिया खा लिया खा लिया अभी तक लोगों को अकल दैट्स वेरी फनी सो आई रियली लाइक व्हेन यू सेड दैट यू वांट टू टॉक अबाउट साइकोलॉजी बिकॉज़ दैट्स व्हाट इट रियली मैटर्स राइट जीप पे कंट्रोल रखो पीपल डोंट गेट इट नाउ यू विल बी सरप्राइज्ड फूड इज एक्चुअली बीइंग यूज्ड एज एंटरटेनमेंट यस यस आई एम ग्लैड यू सेड दैट लेट्स गेट अ केक एंड सेलिब्रेट यस एनिवर्सरी लेट्स गो आउट एंड हैव pasta mm. uh, a baby is born throw a party have the most uh, delicious spread of carbs right <laughs> and uh, wedding invitation chocolates yeah and stuff like that so you know you get the hang of it uh, you will be surprised that the body tunes itself to whatever you expose it to mm. uh, so we know of sadhus in the earlier mm. times they used to go into samadhi right where they used to go into meditation and then they used to remain yeah. that way have you seen any fat sadhu all the sadhus no. are lean yeah and they have yeah, have you seen what they eat they eat very minimal anjeer vanjeer khate hain aur ye sab khate hain minimal they probably just have one meal a day yeah and when they go into samadhi they stay days without eating anything and they survive they are alive yeah and uh, and they're going to live for 100 plus years yes <laughs> it's absolutely possible for the body to have one meal a day and survive without any deficiencies right uh, unlike how we think that you know we need to eat but that also day. depends on what you would i think what every, the aim is yeah yes. people, people, everyone is going to gym and lifting you know heavy squats and doing stuff so you then can't you yeah, then you need right then, then you need food. right yes. but all, what i'm saying is this is also possible huh. so it's not that you need to like i said in the beginning that keep every two hours yeah. depending on everyone's aim uh, even the body is capable of surviving even on one meal a day right i think i personally think that it's not a fix to this problem but i think people when they are young right 20s after immediately after school those boys all of them they want to look good justified right yeah you know you want to date or whatever you want to look good so either you want to do crossfit weightlifting whatever but i think at that age you should realize that okay or you should tell yourself that after 35 or 40 when actually age will take over you your joints will tell you that okay okay calm the fuck down now you can't do all this so at that time they should you know think about even at early age like 30s mid 30s they should start thinking about longevity rather than aesthetics i always feel like that they should you know start eating less uh, go more into you know running jog yoga and lift normal weights don't go too heavy unless you are you know bringing money from that uh, activity don't you think so so heavy weights hmm. uh, abhimanyu is actually a very it's tier 3 the primary thing that you need to be able to 
uh, do with your body, which uh, in India is still not because weightlifting has become so famous and so popular. Mm. Of course, we take all ideas from the West, but yeah. we are running. Uh, about 20 years late from whatever the West has discovered. More than that, I guess, yeah. So, uh, 20 years back, the West was very obsessed with weightlifting, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm. over rocking. We are doing that now. Mm. Whereas the West has already moved into understanding that the first thing you need to do, which is new information, the first thing you need to do before you start weightlifting is be able to balance your body on its own mm. through uh, workouts like Pilates or um, MMA or uh, calisthenics, whatever, yes, body calisthenics, weight. Body yeah. weight. Mm. And then you transit to weight lift. Right. But because we are running 20 years back, we've still not got that information the West already has. Mm. Uh, and as far as you said, you know, people at 35, 40 should uh, move to jogging or yoga. Did you know that a uh, body is ready for resistance training at the age of 7? Okay. And if in those uh, days that your muscle is being molded, uh, your body is being shaped, which is, you know, you're 13, 14, 15, hmm. 16, all those years. You expose your children or expose kids to, which was not the information earlier, but you expose them to sports activities, to exercises. Their muscles get shaped, molded and ready for, you know, they, they, they have that particular body shape. Hmm. And once they're molded into that shape, it's very difficult to get them out of those that wonderful athlete right. shape or the wonderful hmm. uh, uh they have a st that they strong have. foundation. Yes, strong yeah. foundation. And even if they gain weight, God forbid, sometime or they mess up mm. with their body at some point of time, it's very easy to bounce back. But it's very essential that in their growing up days, they are exposed to weights, uh, sorry, to exercises, to uh, sports, mm. to which in India is still very low. Overseas, you see. Um, mm. I, I would, uh, sorry, yes, I, I would, you know, again, I, I don't agree with that because uh, there are there are two ways. That's why I think I don't agree to your point because uh, I'm talking 92. That's like what, 25 years ago, 28, 20, 92, 93. At that time, people in India, I'm talking Jammu, not even metro cities, I'm talking Jammu. Everyone was into sports. They wanted to put their kids into sports. I think this sudden exposure, you know, via social media, to when you see these beautiful phenomenal bodies on Instagram and all. So I think you brainwash okay, which is I mean, yeah, you want to look like that, perfect, fine. But since we are talking foundation, right? We're talking foundation of a kid, a growing kid, right? So it was always there. People, Purane Log, I feel uh, okay, I've heard about your parents. They okay, they they weren't that much into. But Agarab Jao to Log up physical they have to you know farming or whatever they are doing but agar aap normal shehron mein bhi jao to people want their kids to you know ja khela kar ja kuch kiya kar and if they have a facility they would push their kids i used to go to gymnasium there were hundreds of kids practicing over there i'm talking 93 94 right so i think when you say that people weren't aware i think people in india were always aware but I also think that people in India are vulnerable to this exposure. And suddenly they feel that, okay, what we were doing wasn't right. And now this is right, which I think is terribly wrong. Okay, yeah, weight training, get into it when you feel like you want to grow muscle. But kids, you know, 7, 8, 13, 14, yeah, they should. Deepika, when she came, she said that she, you know, she said that I want to do this through your uh, medium. I want to tell every mother and father that when your child is growing, right, initially, put them into gymnastics, as you said, MMA or swimming, so that, you know, they have a strong foundation. And people are doing that ever. I just don't like where it is going right now due to social media, of course. I think in 92, 93, there wasn't much exposure to video games or, you know, in-house uh, Entertainment. Gadgets. Yeah, no, no, gadgets. obviously not. No. And which is where I think a lot of exposure... <laughs> 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 But uh, with the increase in gadgets and uh, video games and, you know, kids getting uh, more exposed yeah, to... sitting inside. Uh, so, 91, you know, the economy opened. We yeah, had yeah. foreign brands entering, so McDonald's, KFC. Yeah. Today, you ask any kid, what do you want to do for your birthday? I want to celebrate it at Pizza Hut or McDonald's. Mm. So they're very clear. Right? Yeah. So, unhealthy food as well as uh, lifestyle has... Uh, grown I think now hmm. and uh, while there are people who are very who ha are conscious parents today are actually very conscious that their kids should be in more healthy activities hmm. however compared to what is happening overseas you see in schools they have soccer teams football teams yeah. 
uh, sports has given a lot of importance overseas as against what it is given over here. We are still, uh, in spite of uh, so many years passing, mm. still give more importance to uh, education as against uh, sports. Yeah, there's only one game period yes. in the whole week, yeah, and that's when kids play. Yeah. So, yeah, in school, I don't know what, what was your thing when you were in school. So, in this, I hated this. So, you know, in 9th and 10th grade, uh -huh. most of the day was full of studies twice in a week. We had singing class. I was like, why are you giving us singing class? We want to go and play. Like, so, there, were no, there was no games. Huh? We didn't have a game. The entire game. week? No. That sucks. Unless the teacher was absent or something and there was a substitution period and they, were, they didn't have any teacher to take care of us. They'd be like, how do you play? Now, now it makes sense what you're saying. Yeah, that's bad. But that's yes, terrible. It's, it's <laughs> that's how they... That's how... Yeah, they, that. In fact, it was uh, considered terrible. And you know what? More than that also, I feel like girls... So when I was young in my society, I used to go and play with the boys. I used to play football and play mm. with my brother's friends. But I had two uh, girl friends and... They would never play, they used to just sit on the side and like chill and talk and gossip and everything and I was like, but I want to play, <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that. That's so, the situation with girls today also, so if you enter a gym, most of them are on the cardio machine, trying to lose fat and very few of them on the weight training. Yeah, few. The, they are getting there, but few, yeah. Yes, very few. They're there, most of them with their trainers, which is what I observe. Most of the days, I'm the only one who's training with the boys. <laughs> and I'm very happy to say that I usually lift the same weight, if not more, than the boys. You look strong. I'm sure you do. I'm sure uh, you do. So, so, yeah. That is. However, uh, I would not uh, uh, speak terrible about uh, cardio completely because that does very well for the visceral fat. So, okay. there are two kinds of fat. Subcutaneous yes. and visceral. Right. Subcutaneous is what surrounds skin, the yeah, skin. Yeah. Visceral is what surrounds the Inside, organs. Yeah, organs. Uh, weight training is very good for the subcutaneous fat mm -hmm. because it increases muscle which sucks onto the, the fat, it increases your BMR, so your burning increases. But for visceral fat, long duration, low intensity, uh, cardio is what is the only thing which is going to deal with your visceral fat. So mm -hmm. I don't completely disagree, but then most of the women are only onto cardio machines, right. uh, which deals with their visceral fat, but you will see very loose skin because mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. not uh, trained their muscles. Muscle, yeah, yeah. Bodies are not told. Right, right. Maitri, I really want, you know, you to tell us about your, you know, how you deal with your clients. Like, how, not deal. Like, I, I want you to tell us that how people should approach you. You have a website. I know about your website. So, yeah, how do you work? And, uh, yeah, I, just out of curiosity, you know, today is Sunday. So, does a nutritionist have a free Sunday? Was it like, or, or because I'm guessing you work online or on phones. I've, I've heard you and most of the times, you know how I figured that you, you were into food? Because most of the time, whenever I cross this woman, right, she's talking to obviously her clients. So at that time, it's always about food plus always concerns. Like I've heard words like, you know, fat, uh, are you having omega or what, what, what? I even heard the word constipation, are you suffering? Okay. Yeah, I was like, either she is... A doctor or she's a nutritionist i had to guess so i want to know do you have free sundays like a nutritionist yeah. frankly i chose this profession after having done a whole lot of jobs mm -hmm. uh, somewhere uh, working for somebody had started feeling like slavery to me uh -huh. so i chose I to come to down to something that i really enjoyed which i discovered very late that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very passionate about nutrition and fitness right. and uh, i actually enjoy all my I think one of the things that my one of the reason why my clients are constantly hooked to me and they become very good friends over a period of time is because uh, I really enjoy what I do and whether it's a Sunday, I, I'm not. So you don't mind, right? No, Even I'm, if you yeah. are getting approached on a Sunday, it's like fun. So it's yeah. fun. I, I love doing that. So yeah, there's I'm no very pressure, happy. right? There's no pressure. It's right. very relaxed. Yeah. So I've heard things like you know you are you are the luckiest if you're being paid for doing something that you right, like. Right. Excuse me. That's my situation right now. We are almost there. We're just not getting paid for it right now. <laughs> I was my situation, something like that. Yeah, so, so I yeah. Get that. yeah. So yeah, before the Sunday thing, and before we get to know more about your website, so there's this thing that I really want to do on this show is that you know, you have a plan. Your clients approach you, so obviously there's a transaction, and then you cater to their clients' needs. So basically, your advice isn't free in a way. Yeah, obviously. And that's how it should be. You work hard for it. You earned it. But now I just want you, I would request you to lay three or four points for a for two groups, age groups I'm talking about. 
kids who are like you know 5 to 13 and people who are you know old people 60 above nutritional advice so that kids growing kids have a good strong foundation and old people since their metabolism is going down and disease is no, they, they are you know then they are open to it. so nutritional advice to both the groups let's just have two or three strong foundation so that and you know let's just make sure that people do follow it so yeah both the groups let's just take it one by one so if kids mm-hmm. anything anything it can so your area if you have to give three points to kids what will they do i think uh, kids should and they are more in the hands of the parents hmm. than anything else. in step a way out. we are talking to parents in yeah step out go out get them enrolled for all fitness classes hmm. uh, karate tennis skating whatever they like explore a lot of options to discover what your child likes and keep them there let them if they like yoga do that whatever hmm. works but keep them out keep them into fitness right you cannot pull them away from mcdonalds and kfc Um, you can't. You can't. You, you can't, can't tell them have fruits and vegetables, mm. and they're just not going to eat, and that just doesn't work. So let them continue. They are growing. Their metabolism is high. Uh, let them have uh, a medium amounts of whatever they enjoy, but but increase their physical activity. Uh, put them into different kind of sports and uh, whatever games they like. Explore so that they understand mm. what they like. Yeah. And as far as sixty above is concerned, um, it's a time when probably. for people who have not been fit maybe diseases have entered like yeah. diabetes arthritis ensure that you keep uh, so walking would be one thing that yeah. is easier for people above 60 right continue that make sure you are walking walking is decent enough it's good enough definitely reduce your food intake there the focus should be on your food there are a lot of uh, uh, people above 60 senior citizens that consult me they only take one meal in a day probably a lunch and hmm. they skip their dinner maybe that's really wise for them to do right they are, they are, the body is not ready to digest more the bmr is reducing you need to fuel your body to survive yeah. and stay strong but you are not in a position if you are just walking there are a lot of senior citizens above 60 70 who play tennis you right. are into weight lifting yeah, and I know they, few, yeah, they yes. run <laughs> yeah they run and they need to uh, they also need to fuel their bodies accordingly otherwise their bodies won't function for the kind of sports activities they are into but generally i think most of them are uh, advised to walk mm. regularly brisk walks in the morning if possible even after dinner uh, and definitely reduce their food intake and what about the addiction i would call it addiction and i would call them a drug addiction to caffeine and nicotine chai and coffee and I, let me be just very frank i'm talking about my mother right now very functional very active she runs like she is into long distance running wow. and so is my father he is even beyond so yeah uh, my point is that my mother is very active the whole day and i don't want to take the tea away from it the whole routine right because if you take one cup of tea out of a routine she will crash she will crash so, and it's like years and years and i'm in doubt to call uh, that thing that is it negative or because she is doing fine she's having two or three cups without sugar kabhi kabhi wo meetha biscuit kha leti hai saath mein so like main chini nahi khati biscuit kha i'm like yeah doesn't make a difference but my point is that should people i don't see any harmful effects because she's having two or three cups of a tea she can't do without it so what's your take on caffeine and nicotine it's fine right she does fine nicotine is not fine like chai chai are you so caffeine is fine however let me just inform you hmm. 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after caffeine avoid having something because caffeine uh, diminishes the absorption of any food that you've had 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after otherwise it's all right if it's functioning well if it's contributing like i said there are exceptions if it's contributing to the functioning hmm. of a person continue they should continue right not. there's no because people like chai peeta hai my, my father is always after my mother ki aap tum chai peete rehte ho jab dekho so Doesn't if it works for her let her have it yeah and she has age to back it up right she's right. like i'm healthy enough yeah what are you so it's saying? working for her yeah nicotine however i'm against because the presence of nicotine doesn't leave your body and your system uh-huh. uh, unlike caffeine 15 minutes before 15 minutes after it does leave your system nicotine remains in your system and it really hampers the absorption of good minerals macros. that's what i've heard about tea yes so, yeah. both and even alcohol whenever you consume alcohol the body will stop burning fat and start burning alcohol Have you met people who support? Uh, who are okay? I'm really I I I laugh at such people who say that you know I drink wine because it's good, good for, for me. the heart. Good for me. Okay. 
आई एग्री वेर यू कमिंग फ्रॉम ठीक है आप बोल रहे हो अच्छा वाई डोंट यू ओन द फैक्ट दैट यू वॉन्ट टू ड्रिंक वाइन एंड यू वॉन्ट टू गेट इंटॉक्सिकेटेड दैट फाइन से दैट आई बी फाइन अदरवाइज इफ यू टॉक वॉट्स द थिंग आई आई फॉर गॉटन द नेम ऑफ द कॉम्पाउंड रिजर्व ट्रॉल समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट इज प्रेजेंट दैट एज यू नो एन एंटाई ऑक्सीडेंट वो मूंगफली में भी होता है वो ग्रेप्स में भी होता है वो खा लो ना अगर आपको वो चाहिए तो But I guess whatever works for them. If that's how they're choosing, if they, uh, that's how they are choosing to camouflage their yeah, addiction, it, then that's yeah. They should come up with you know whatever. There anyway. are lots of things that are, if you're looking for something that's good for the heart, there are lots of other things that are good for the heart. <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely not your uh, reason. Your yeah. reason is because hmm. you are looking for a reason to justify alcohol. Uh, now, how do you connect with your clients? Like your website and how? What, what what's your you know? uh interestingly i never started this with as a profession hmm. i told you i started it because i really enjoyed it in fact in the beginning i was giving out free advices right. without even understanding because things were working on me everyone wanted to know what did i do uh-huh. and because i had studied so much for myself hmm. everyone i would just give out free advices free diets free everything then people started telling me that you know why don't you start charging for it hmm. and that's when i think very slowly i made it a profession right uh Till date, I don't market myself anymore. It's totally references, totally. So people see a change in you if you were my client, mm-hmm. and your friend would take word of mouth. So yeah, totally word of mouth. Okay. Uh, no marketing at all. Uh, and if it's... someone wants to reach to reach out to me, so I have a website. Right. Already. It's uh, called uh, www. dot maitriramaya. dot com. Right. And there you have my email ID. Hmm. You can send me an email. There is a sign up form as well. There is my phone number also. Right. I always prefer phone calls. I'm always dealing with my clients on my hmm. own uh, because I don't give them to my assistants. I enjoy it. Yeah, I've read your WhatsApp stories, or you know, you put the update not available on this this date. Yes. So that that tells you that okay, you're dealing with a professional. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I am. I, I do keep doing that, and I'm very particular. I only deal with. I don't like to hand them over to the assistants because I enjoy this. I'm yeah, they're looking for you. They're, they're actually looking for you, yes. right? So you know why to hand them over. And uh, so you uh, work. Uh, so you live in Pune. Pune is your hometown, right? For now, yes. For now. So and you have your office in Mumbai and Dubai as well. I have my office in Mumbai, but I have a lot of I have clients globally because my work is online uh-huh. and uh, the references have gone all the way to Frankfurt, Texas, mm. <laughs> nice. uh, New Zealand. So I'm dealing with clients from there as well, and it's very convenient because we either make WhatsApp calls or there are so many of hmm. these Skype calls or right. mediums. Uh, they send me images of how they are moving. My monitoring is very strong. Every week they have to check their weight, their measurements, and their images. Um, I'm watching out for how they are moving, and I don't know how this happens. In fact, one of my clients also commented that it's. Interesting how you have so many of them, and yet you know the details of each right. one of them. But I guess it's because I really, I really enjoy. I know when they have been ill. Mm. I know when they have gone haywire. I know everything. I know their details all the while at the back of my head. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I am very happy now that uh, people are uh, taking nutrition seriously. In mm. fact, so much so that a lot of people have gotten interested in uh, how to do nutrition. Uh, the, the specifics of it. In fact, so many of my clients keep researching on everything that I tell them, right. and uh, they are more than happy to do edu- uh, to study about it. Mm. And we are launching uh, an international training institute first in Dubai, and then mm. we have plans to go overseas. Right. Uh, this is going to be a residential training institute, okay. wherein uh, we are going to have people coming from overseas mm. staying with us for a span of three months. Okay. We've taken a big approach. Are, are these are the all those people who are coming? Are they clients or are they experts who are? They are people who want to study nutrition for multiple purposes. So uh-huh. they could either study the three months. It's a three month course. Right. They could study be with us, study that course, and plan to take up something more uh, long term in terms of. Maybe a degree course in nutrition, mm. or they could study it and launch their own nutrition practice, mm. or they could study it and keep it to themselves and apply all the policies or whatever everything that they learned for themselves and generally their friends and family. Right. Excuse me. So these are three month courses that we are starting, mm. uh, and people are going to come from uh, different parts of the world. It's a residential, yeah, yeah. different parts of the world, and we will be conducting courses in the morning. Having it's a we are taking an apartment, so mm. we will be staying there. We'll have classes in the hall in the morning, and 
practicals in the kitchen for nutrition right. and then the rest of the days. That, that, that is a great initiative because yeah, we are combining nutrition. This kitchen part, I really, you know, it really, yeah. So, and workouts as well? Like, are we talking? No, no this no. is going to be only nutrition. Nutrition based. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Plus, it is your stronger point, I guess. Yes. Rather than, you know. And I also think that it's a bit, it's not right to, if you are totally into nutrition, I'm sure you can give fitness advice as well. But there are other people who have trained weights and who know how to tell people. So, nowadays, you see a lot of people, you know, they want to, you know, just, they're like, ja- uh, what do you call them? Jack of all trades? Yeah. yeah. So, they are being that right now, right? Yes. So, I'm really glad that you are focusing on nutrition because, yeah. And I think that's about it. But before we just, you know, wrap it up, uh, you I also know, I got to know that you are a biker. Yes. Yeah. So I want to know about that. Plus I've seen your images on your social media. So <laughs> I, this is very interesting because your social media travel, I'm talking about travel and your lifestyle. So it's a spectrum, right? So on one side, it's the entire, you know, you cover the whole bandwidth. So on one side, I see you, you know, in, you know, those luxurious, uh, whatever, your sunglasses and all. And on the other hand, you and your husband, right? You and your husband, you are like vagabonds and hippies and all, you know, you know. So that's really, because I've seen both ends, but differently. Like, uh, so there's this, you know, balance. Like, okay, you travel like that as well and you travel like that as well. So yeah, biker, how, please tell us more about that and your travel as well. So I have uh, been a tomboy ever since. Huh? I always wanted to do things that I was told I can't do. As a girl, I can't mm. do, which is why gymming, because girls are not supposed to be lifting weights, which is why biking, because girls are not supposed to be carrying heavy bikes. Oh my God, till date, when I go on a Harley, I have people turning and... Uh, <laughs> that is a wow, but I mean, I would do that. I would do the wow. I mean, like, if someone is looking good, if the, if the rider is a girl or boy, that doesn't matter. But if someone is looking attractive... Plus a Harley to compensate it. Yeah, I mean, I think that is justified. Thank you. <laughs> but I think there are a lot of Harley female riders. But I think one of the reasons why people turn their head is because they can't connect a woman with something. Many can't. Still can't. Yeah, I know. With something I know. heavy or, you know. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't. Not open to that right now. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, as for my husband, uh, the whole, all the romantic images that you see of ours is completely my husband. If you go to his profile <laughs> and see, it, it's filled with me. <laughs> it's completely filled with me. Better be. I mean, they, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise he, he's in some danger. <laughs> he's the romantic, the romantic one of the two of us. Right. So he decides, he remembers Valentine's Day, he remembers my birthday, he makes it special, he remembers our anniversary, so he does all these things. Uh-huh. It's him, not me. He buys me all my bags, shoes, everything, my access, everything he decides. Perfect. So I'm a spoiled wife. <laughs> nice. Uh, it was fun talking to you, Matthew. Super. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.